Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Today on the show, I get to introduce you to Joshua Tongle. Josh is a spiritual leader, out-of-body explorer, and healing practitioner. He's also the host of the Flipside podcast, where he interviews brilliant minds influential leaders, celebrities, and more. With his unique and diverse background, he has become a fresh voice for modern-day spirituality. As a rising thought leader, Josh's simple yet profound teachings have helped countless people throughout the world. He has spoken to thousands of people at meetings, conferences, universities, workshops, and churches, and speaks on topics such as religion, paranormal phenomena, and personal development. He is the author of So You Thought You Knew, Letting Go of Religion, and The Secret to Awesomeness, Creating the Life You've Always Wanted. Josh has been interviewed on popular blogs such as the Huffington Post and Examiner.com and is a graduate of Biola University and Talbot School of Theology. He and his wife, Remy, currently live in the Philippines. You can find out more about Josh on his website, joshuatongle.com, and you can even meet Josh one-on-one as he's a presenter at the upcoming Soul (laughs) Summit Scottsdale, September 12th through 15th, 2019, (laughs) and you can find out more at Soul summit scottsdale.com. And as you can sense, we've got a great young man excited to be on this episode, (laughs) Josh Tongle, welcome to We Don't Die Radio, my new friend. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Andrew. It's good to be on the show. Really good to have you, too. And I I just knew that we'd hit it off. And uh, <laughs> I'm getting that feeling this will be a great episode. Thank you for Same being here. here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So you're in the Philippines now, correct? Yeah, I'm currently, we're currently in Manila, but I was born and raised in, in Cali, in California, pretty, uh-huh. much, pretty much my whole life. <laughs> so, but this is our home for now. Oh, and how long have you been there? Uh, well, back and forth, but I started back here in 2009, so a couple of years. Yeah, yeah really? With my wife and I, so Aww. it's nice. And how long have you been married? <laughs> uh, for eight years. Yeah, Great. we just celebrated our anniversary back in March. So, yeah, it's been it's been a nice journey, nice ride, and, you know, she's on the same page with me and all this stuff that I'm doing, so that's that's an awesome thing to have. That's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So how's your story start? I know I've read a lot about you on your internet and I don't <laughs> think you were ever convinced in healing and miracles and all that. Yeah. But yeah. Let's hear about you. Yeah, sure. Sure. So there's a lot of transitions, but um, I'll start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure you're aware of when you saw the website, I was actually born and raised in a Christian home. And as a lot of people are aware, there's there's not just like one type of Christianity, but there's a bunch of different types of Christianities. There's like 30 plus uh, denominations and different types of sects of Christians. And so I was part of the Christian camp that was known as the charismatic kind. And so just for your audience, the charismatic kind of Christianity were the ones who believed in the quote unquote supernatural. And I say quote unquote because I, I just think that's not a, I think it's a misnomer. But yeah, it's a supernatural where you believe in uh, the miracles and prophecy and tongues and healing and, you know, just a lot of supernatural things, you know. And so that was pretty much my environment. And so when I was born into that kind of faith, it's not necessarily that I was just born into it and I didn't believe it, but I actually believed it wholeheartedly. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I mean, this is the stuff that I believed. I lived. I didn't just go through the rituals, but I actually believed it, you know, and pretty much it was interesting. Ever since I was a child, I've always been interested in like near death experiences because my mom would tell me stories as a little kid about people going to heaven. (laughs) And I was always like so fascinated with that, you know, especially as a kid. You don't really, you're not really skeptical about that stuff, especially within that kind of context of the miracles and supernatural stuff that I was raised in. And so I was always like, wow, I would love to to experience heaven like that one day, you know, just not have the near death part, you know, so it would be pretty right. exciting to meet Jesus and be in these types of interesting environments, you know, with your senses heightened, etc. You know, and um, what's also interesting is that I, I did have some certain experiences as I was growing up that would be considered like paranormal right and so I, if i were to pick at least two vivid ones it would be where when i was a little child i was probably around five years old and i was in my my bedroom and it was like late at night and then all of a sudden i saw this literally like a ghostly figure floating in the corner of my room and it was very clear and it didn't say anything 
it was just staring at me <laughs> and as a little child wow you know honestly i i freaked out and so i just screamed you know not that it did anything bad to me but i was scared and i screamed sure. and my parents came in the room and they prayed over me and surprisingly i i went back to sleep i didn't like sleep with my parents in their bedroom and stuff but you know so that was one very vivid memory that i had of just kind of giving me a glimpse that there's more to this physical world and there was another incident when i was growing up where my dad told me like we we're about to head out somewhere and my dad's like hey joe because my nickname is joe He's like, why don't you close a sliding door? And so we have this really big sliding door, you know, that's in between our living room and the patio. So I shut it. And as I was walking away, I literally saw a flash, like right behind me, like this flash as if someone was taking a picture of me with a flash on, you know, and I heard the sound like that. And I was like, oh, what's that? <laughs> and then I turned around and then my dad's like, hey. I, I told you to close the sliding door and I saw the door. It was completely open. And so as I got older, I never I never forgot about those um, two incidences. And it just I didn't really know how to understand it. You know, of course, probably as a as a Christian at the time, I was probably thinking maybe it's the devil <laughs> or, or in a more positive sure. context or maybe there's an angel or whatever. Uh, but one of the, you know, being, growing up in this type of faith, one of the I, I guess you could say big parts of my life, as I think you might have been aware of it from the website that you visited, is that I was born with only one hand. Were you aware of that? No. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I was born with only one hand. And so if you were to imagine growing up in a, in a Christian home that believed in a God that was a God of miracles, right? So like as Christians, we would talk about God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means God can do anything, you right. know, because part the seas and et cetera, raise the dead. Why can't he heal my hand? And so as a child, you know, unfortunately, it's like I, I was, I experienced a lot of, you know, teasing and, you know, I was being made fun of and sure. just things that just wouldn't wish upon a kid. And unfortunately, um, it got to me. And so, you know, I became very insecure and very self-conscious growing up and, um, so because of that, I, because of my faith that I was raised in, I, I would always ask God and pray for two hands, you know, so I'd always like go to bed at night, sometimes crying <laughs> and asking God, you know, hopefully I'll wake up tomorrow with two hands and nothing would happen. Right. And so I started going from, you know, miracle crusade. We, we had these things called miracle crusades. These are like these really big events, thousands of people where people would see famous what we would call faith healers. Mm -hmm. And so I would go to these different ones with these very big names, at least at that time. And once again, seek out for healing, but then nothing obviously happened. But the major turning point in my life, Sandra, was when I was 17 years old. And I found out that there was this really famous faith healer at the time, probably the most famous one. Yeah, at the time. And I told all my friends, my closest friends at school and some of them from church, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to go to this event and I'm going to come back with two hands. <laughs> so it was a pretty bold statement. Yes. Uh, and I was telling this to my non-Christian friends because I was trying to also, you know, we would call it like witnessing. We're trying to convert them, proselytize them, you know. And uh, I took them to this event and there I was lifting up both of my hands in the air, crying, you know, in a way like yelling out to God to heal me, heal me, you know, and nothing was happening. And my friends that were there that I brought with me, they, were, they weren't Christian. And so they were probably wondering, like, what's what's going on with Josh? You know, nothing's happening, like he said. And so I got discouraged. And I remember telling my friends to take me down to the stage so I could have the faith healer literally touch and lay hands on me. Because I thought, hey, maybe if, the, if I go directly to this faith healer, something miraculous might happen. So right. I tried doing that. I went downstairs, but it was so crowded. And the faith healer said come back tomorrow and I was like ah <laughs> you know so I went back the next day and obviously nothing happened again and so it's interesting because people would assume that I would I would have become bitter from that experience but I actually wasn't it was more of a discouragement just like oh okay I guess maybe God doesn't do these types of miracles today you know like making mm -hmm. full hands grow out or whatever and so at that same time, when I was 17, I was introduced to something called apologetics. And I'm not sure how familiar you are with that term. No. Have you? Nope. Okay, so apologetics, just to define it for you and your audience, is that there's many different types of apologetics. But apologetics, the gist of it would be you're basically defending something. So in other words, I got heavily involved 
in defending the Christian faith. Somebody at my school, one of the teachers was a Christian apologist, and so she was like an intellectual. So in, she introduced this world to me of intellectual Christianity. So an example would be if someone were to ask me, how do you know the Bible is true or how do you know God exists? And I would lay out the you know, the philosophical arguments for God or mm-hmm. the historical, et cetera. And so I got heavily involved in that world of academia and intellectual Christianity where I was more in my head, to be honest, right? right. And not so much in the heart. And of course, I didn't want to admit that at the time. <laughs> but no. yeah, I was just really to my books and learning all these things. And what's interesting about that is at the, the people that I was directly studying under who were Christian apologists, because it honestly changed my life, Sandra, studying apologetics, because I became more skeptical. I started to no longer believe in the quote unquote supernatural and all the miracles. And so I started to kind of filter and and look back at my experiences growing up as a Christian and growing, going to all these interesting meetings of people who were speaking in tongues and falling down and um, having Holy Ghost laughter, like these weird phenomena. You know, I started to look back. I'm like, oh, maybe I was into like some really cultic stuff. I was like trying to reflect. <laughs> and I started to have that kind of filter where I became extremely skeptical of actually all those things. And so I, I had that mindset for literally eight years of not just being a skeptic, but I was actually a hardcore critic of all those things because I started to believe that all those guys that I used to listen to and see on Christian television were all charlatans, that they were all out there for your money, and um, there was no evidence, no documentation for all of their bold claims they would make. And so I had my story to tell people. And I did it, honestly, I did it out of a pure heart, letting people know, like, hey, you guys, because a lot of my friends were into that kind of stuff. Maybe this stuff isn't real, and maybe we're being lied to. Maybe we're, you know, being deceived. And, you know, at that time, I was able to persuade people to not believe in that stuff anymore, because that was my passion, believe Mm -hmm. it or not. I was trying to get people to not be deceived anymore. But what uh, happened in 2005 uh, was a big challenge for me, because in 2005, I ended up having a really bad back injury. And just in case you didn't know, I grew up as a break dancer, Sandra. <laughs> Believe wow. it or not, despite my hand, I did that my whole life since uh-huh. I was in elementary school. Great. So that was like my <laughs> big passion. And I injured my back at a party. And I remember when I when I injured myself, everything below my waist literally got numb and like super, super heavy. And that never happened before, and I got scared. And I remember I went home that night, and I eventually went to the hospital, and I found out that I eventually had something called a herniated disc or a sciatica. Mm-hmm. And just for your listeners, what happened with that is that my spine, in between each vertebrae, there are certain discs, right? And so what happened while I was dancing is that my discs eventually got crushed, and so they were slipping out. You know, you would call it like a slip disc and ended up pinching a nerve. And so it hurt like hell, <laughs> just mm-hmm. to be honest. And this lasted for a pretty long time where every time I coughed, it hurt. Every time I sneezed, every time I laughed, which I love to do, I love to joke around. I just, it was, I was in so much, not, this is like a real word for it. it was excruciating pain. It was literally excruciating pain where I had many nights just crying myself to sleep, not knowing if I'm going to walk normally anymore. And even, you know, I, I would literally just fall down sometimes, Sandra, just as I'm walking, you know, like I'd walk super, super slow. If I would lie down on the ground, um, I couldn't even get up. I would scream in pain because I just can't get up. And so there I was in my early 20s having that serious back injury. But things started to go for the worst because not too long after that, I eventually was at a friend's house and I started suffering attack an attack in my chest. And it literally felt like a heart attack. And so the left side, I started feeling this weird stuff on the left side of my body. And that night, I remember I thought I was going to die. No exaggeration. I really thought I was going to die. Wow. And I didn't have health insurance at the time. And I was panicking and telling my parents to take me to the hospital. And it probably wasn't the smartest move. But I ended up just forcing myself to endure it until I fell asleep. I eventually went to the hospital. And I found out that I was diagnosed with something called Uh, GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease. And so it's just a problem with my throat. And if I were to look back, Sandra, honestly, I've never had even like chest pains or heartburn at all. Like not that I could ever remember, but at that night, for some reason, it was just this one extreme attack. 
And so that's why it was so out of the blue in a way for me. And when I got to the hospital, they told me I had, a, I had an extreme form of it, which was like scary to hear. And so from that day forward, I literally tasted acid in my mouth and vomit. I had chest pain, heartburn every day, pretty much with no exaggeration, 24-7. Like I, I would have memories of someone giving me, like I would eat like a little lifesaver mm -hmm. and I would be screwed up the entire day, just a little tiny candy. And so you imagine in a person in his, in his early 20s already suffering from back problems right. and I can't even eat whatever I want to eat, just anything like ketchup, soda, nothing. <laughs> and Phil, I'm Filipino. And so Filipino food is very oily, like none of that stuff I could eat. And so I had many nights where I would just cry, honestly, just asking God, why is this happening to me? Because I'm so young and I'm also... Um, serving at a church you know trying to do good in this world and it i just wasn't getting any better and of course as you know i was a skeptic at that time so i stopped going to faith healers all that stuff was just bs to me you know until 2006 and so it was about a year later where what changed my life was when i met this man named william beeson and here's this guy talking to me and several other students about uh what we would call a miracle that he had and keep in mind that i'm extremely skeptical i don't believe any miracle stories all those eight years right literally i don't believe anything so it would, you would have to do a really good job in persuading me and so i hear this guy who's very monotone and they describe this man as like a modern day job and just in case people aren't aware who job is in the bible job was a guy in the old testament that suffered really really badly in the old testament so people were calling this william beeson guy like a modern day job where he's pretty known in the medical world and basically what happened in his back was that his the discs in his spine ruptured and so that's pretty bad long story short he had five surgeries five surgeries you have one surgery you're never the same he had five in fact he had to get two more so it was a total of seven and every time he had a surgery it just wasn't get it just wasn't improving and so he was showing us medical records from ucla from germany and i'm like whoa that's really very interesting because you know he's bringing in the documentation as evidence and um this guy's talking to me and he's completely normal and healthy but he was showing us pictures telling us his story about how he was bedridden 22 hours a day so he was this really big guy but after having this injury he became super super skinny and mm -hmm. depressed and was in a wheelchair he would pass out you know after just a couple minutes of leaving him alone like it was that bad like that's why they would call him a modern day job and then he talks about one day where he goes to a place for like a healing service. And he only did that for the sake of his family, for his wife, because he didn't really believe in that stuff. He had no expectations. He just wanted to die. So he goes to this church for healing. Nothing happens that he's aware of, you know, at least in, in the sense of healing. He goes back home. And he starts writing everything in his journal because that's just, just what he did. He always documented everything. He feels a strong wind come into his room. And all of a sudden, he's out of his body. And he ended up in what he would describe as heaven. And there's this being that he would describe as Jesus. And remember, this Willie Beeson guy is not a religious type of guy. And this Jesus figure told him, says, you are going to be 100% healed, restored to your youth. He has this interesting experience, you know, with different beings and streets of tra translucent gold, etc. He comes back to his body. And he is 100% healed. And there's a lot more that I could share because I'm, I'm pretty good friends with them. But I'm trying to condense the story. And for some reason, Sanjo, when I heard him, you know, after eight years of being a skeptic and going through so much pain physically and emotionally, I started to believe him. Mm -hmm. Like I was open all of a sudden. I don't know, it's just because of my desperation. But it was also because of the evidence that he brought in. You know, he even has like a really close friend who's an atheist who can testify that his miracle is real. Like the guy is still an atheist. He's like, yeah, I'm still an atheist. But my friend Willie was like this one day and the next day he's healed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, you know, even his atheist friend was able to verify that something happened. And so when I introduced myself to Willie, um, we became good friends and I told him about my back only. And what happened was, you know, we, we exchanged information and he gave me the link to the website where he received healing prayer and I went to the website and it was like a very typical 
Christian healing church, and I was already turned off. <laughs> you could just imagine me like rolling my eyes. Like, oh honest. no, yes. Yeah, like I've been through this before, you know, these faith healer guys. And I was sorry to read the testimonies, and the testimonies were like, back's getting healed. I'm like, eh, I've heard that before. It's probably just psychosomatic or whatever. And then headaches, I'm like, eh, you know. And then I started to see testimonies of people getting healed of cancer. I was like, huh, you know, that's real. That That is a big deal if mm-hmm. this is real. You know, and then I heard a saw a testimony of someone where it said that their arm grew out, and I'm like, what? (laughs) An arm grow out? Like, what does that mean? Does that mean like they were missing a whole arm or a little an arm? Mm -hmm. And I got extremely, extremely, extremely confused. It was a very emotional moment. I remember vividly, and I remember right after I saw that, I went to the prayer chapel because this was at my university, and I started crying because for the first time in eight years, Sandra my desire to be healed came back because I was wondering, is this real? Because I don't want to go to another healing service and get let down again like I did when I was 17, right. you know? And so long story short, I ended up revisiting the topic of healing again. And I had this renewed interest where I started to check out some other people who were into healing that weren't the so-called like religious fanatics that I that I believe who were mm-hmm. like religious fanatics who are very anti-intellectual etc cetera, etc cetera. but I started to find out about these other groups of people who were very intellectual who were reasonable and in fact some of them were even former skeptics who be, who became believers in what they would call the supernatural but as I would say today more of the paranormal phenomena right and so I started to immerse myself heavily in that world again with a completely different grid, (laughs) different lens, you know, glasses. And eventually I started to do healing upon other people. And for the first time, Sandra, I started to see results for the first time. Like they were immediate of people who were getting, you know, their pains were getting healed. They were able to remove their casts like pretty quickly. And, and what's even better was that my back and my girds is completely healed. (laughs) <laughs> so th- honestly it's like completely healed Sandra where I, wow. I know for sure my body is not even normal now because back in the day when I used to just cry carrying a laptop you know I carry a laptop like every day now when I'm walking here in the Philippines and I still even lift weights and mm-hmm. even with my GERDs disappearing literally overnight Sandra where I was on medication I took eight pills a day I remember during that period where I was always super sleepy <laughs> because of the side effects, but I quit it cold turkey. And if you were to see the way that I eat now, I eat whenever I want and whatever I want, like no joke. And that's like something that I know for sure something is not normal because I know I look young, but I'm actually 38, which is still young. <laughs> but people think I'm a lot younger, but even right. people might think, you know, like, no, Josh, you, the stuff that you're eating, man, that's what we used to eat back in high school, you know, like even in college, we don't even eat that stuff. But, you know, I'm a big, like, I love chips and chocolate, <laughs> you know, and that stuff that I could still enjoy like at two or three in the morning and then go straight to sleep, which is not recommended by people. Like their minds would be like, no, that's bad. You know, that's acidic or whatever. And, you know, to each his own. But that's something that I've seen. My body has been completely healed of that, Sandra. That's why I would always get so emotional, like just thinking about it. Right. And so as I started to delve more into healing, I started opening myself up to what we would call the paranormal world, paranormal phenomena, where I started getting these uh, premonitions and these dreams that started leading me out of even the ministry that that I was a part of, because the church ministry that I was serving with at the time, they weren't open to this stuff because my church at the time was very conservative. You know, since I was a skeptic for eight years, I joined a very conservative mm-hmm. church who was not into this stuff. So they weren't too happy <laughs> about my shift. And I just knew I couldn't deny uh, what I was experiencing because it changed my life. And so I eventually left. And I just started to speak at other places and sharing my story. And I started noticing that I started to have these weird experiences of just knowing things about people. So if I were to share like a story, one of the first ones would be I was in a place called Orange County called The Block. It's like an outdoor mall. And I was just chilling. I was hanging out at a bookstore. And uh, I remember just randomly, boom, I heard a thought said, ask her about her dad. I'm like, what? Like, that's so weird. I would never ask a random stranger about her, their dad. <laughs> you know, so it made me feel very uncomfortable. I'm like, I literally heard that. It's weird. And so I just asked the girl and she just broke down and she opened up and it was something very personal, to be honest. Like it was a little bit like, whoa, 
Um, and, you know, there was like some sort of abuse going on in as well. And then my friend and I were able to encourage her and, you know, spend some time with her. And then not too long after that, I was like, wow, what's going on? I went to the library at school. We were using, the, I was using the computer. And then a girl about uh, two seats over next to me around there, um, I just saw her all of a sudden get emotional as she's on the lap, on her, on the desktop. I was like, huh, what's going on? Let me try to listen if there's anything I could share to her. Then a name popped up. So I looked at her, I said, excuse me, does this name mean anything to you? And she's like, oh my gosh, that's the person that I'm cont contacting about. So I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> like I'm hearing voices. Right. You know? And uh, so I started to really, really delve into that a lot. <laughs> so yeah, what's happening? I'm <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm like, let's go. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It, but it's like my, my conservative Christian grid did it know how to make sense of it. Like my, my friends didn't understand it. They're, in fact, a lot of them were very upset because a lot of my Christian friends were like, Josh, you told us not to believe in this stuff back in the day. Now you're doing it. You know, and I'm like, I know. I mean, I was surprised. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know, why you're the perfect messenger, right? Because yeah, yeah. you've so been on both It, it kind of ends. backfired, but sure. if you look at it another way, they could say, no, 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 maybe. That's, and so in that sense, yeah, you're right. That's why my family started to believe me. Like I remember my sister's like, Joe, Joe, I remember you. You were so against this, but now that you're into it, I believe you. <laughs> you know, so it's, it, I guess it depends on who you're talking to. But um, I started to, um, you know, have these types of experiences and starting to feel other people's pain, which is something that I still experience now. You know, like if I were to be hanging out with somebody um, just based on the energy, I could know where they're experiencing something. So as I started to have these types of experiences, I started to question even my own faith, when I became a missionary to the Philippines, which, you know, perfect timing, right? The question when you're a missionary. And I, that's why I came out here, actually, in case you didn't know, I came out to the Philippines as a missionary. But I started to question just my own limited Christian worldview, where I started to make a lot of relationships that were just not, like I started to see on how much of a bubble I lived in for most of my life of judging people of like you know here i am coming to the philippines trying to save everybody you know quote unquote save them from hell and because back in the day I had, a, I had a very like us versus them mentality you know mm -hmm. like uh, we're in they're out we're saved you're not we're going to heaven you're going to hell and you know we have jesus so we're blessed and you don't you're buddhist so you're probably a good person but you're still going to go to hell anyways you know like stuff like that oh at least you were one mind. of them <laughs> oh yeah, i so, know a lot of them yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I just started to notice like, wow, you know, just based on my experiences, um, it feels like my Christian worldview mm -hmm. just didn't make it didn't resonate with me anymore. And that's when I started to, you know, kind of question and drift away and start to let go some of my my fundamental Christian beliefs that I'll be honest, it wasn't easy in the beginning because this was my life. You know, I, I studied theology. I went to become a missionary and right. I was a pastor for several years. And so it was something that. I really had to look within myself and say, am I willing to to do this and to transition? And my wife and I, we we did. We eventually did at the price of, you know, losing a lot of friends, mm -hmm. a lot of people talking negative things. And, you know, and I don't, I'm not mad, to be honest. I'm just more of like, I, I think they just don't understand. Right. But I understand where they're coming from. Sure. You know, so that's why I'm not angry. But we started transitioning and I started to notice that, God, the universe is just so much bigger than than my religion that I was raised in and sharing to people. And I started to explore other healing modalities because that was another eye opener for me. Because back in the day as a Christian, I always did it the Christian way. So if you're not familiar with it, it's like you're always doing it healing in, in Jesus name, be healed or demon, get out. Right. <laughs> you know, that was the Christian version. And at that time, back in the day, I was always like condemning other non-Christian people healing practices so like reiki or the new age stuff i was like that's all demonic you know but now this time as i started to um shift and transition out of my christian faith i started to explore these other <laughs> modalities of reiki and qigong and quantum healing quantum touch etc and i started to notice just based upon my own experiences is that it's all semantics like it's all the same it's just semantics <laughs> you know so as i've seen people growing up falling down at these events where you know people would lay hands on you and people would start shaking and um, speaking in tongues right. and having interesting experiences where they'll feel stuff in their back here i am looking at these other 
healers who are not Christian who are shaking and having Kundalini experiences in the back and, you know, third eye opening and having psychic abilities. And I'm like, whoa, that's it's just the same thing what I experienced in the Christian world. We just didn't call it psychic. We called it prophetic. We called it word of knowledge. We called it different things. Mm -hmm. You know, we wouldn't call it energy. We would say it's Holy Ghost. It's a Holy Ghost upon you, you know. And I started doing those things, exploring that area. But what I noticed, just to backtrack a little bit, was that in 2006, I had uh, like an, it's the start of my out of body experiences. And this was something that was really out of the blue because I was inside of a library at school and I was lying down and I saw this extremely, extremely bright light just shining on me and I was completely awake. And in my mind, the exact words were, here we go. I heard about this. You know, I just said that in my head. And all of a sudden, I felt these really, really strong vibrations and um, this ringing in my ear. And it's like, zzz, like that. And the energy was so strong. I felt like I was being crushed, to be honest. I, it didn't hurt, though. It's weird. It, I was just felt this energy so strong. It was extremely uncomfortable. And then it disappeared. And then it came back two more times. I was like, oh, what was that? <laughs> you know, that, that, that was just a weird experience. And then not too long after that, I was in the library again, and then um, I was lying down on the beanbag. Then all of a sudden, I was in one aisle. Then all of a sudden, I was in another aisle. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, whoa, 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 whoa. where am I? <laughs> you know, so it, it was so weird. It's like my out of body, I just ended up in another aisle of the library. But it was exactly the same library. The beanbag was there. And I'm like, what am I doing here in another aisle? And the, my vision was very gloom. It was like very gloomy, like kind of dim as if someone dimmed the lights. And I didn't know what was going on. And then, boom, I went back to my body. I was like, what was that? You know, and that was like back in 2006. And so I still didn't know what to do with those experiences. Then years later, I started to delve more into not just near death, but out of body travel. And I eventually learned that, oh, my gosh, you could actually learn how to get out of body. And I was like, I'm going to learn this stuff, you know, because I want to know more about the afterlife. I want to know. I want to get answers for myself. You know, about do do other beings exist, angels, demons, you know, God, etc. At least I want to experience these things on another level, you know. And so I tried learning these things for several months, these techniques I was trying, but nothing was working. And then one day, boom, it started happening. I started having OBEs regularly, like several times a month, several times a week, and sometimes even several times in one day. And it's just absolutely transform my life Sandra and that's how I eventually even found your podcast because I was looking up stuff about the afterlife and um, mediumship and all those things and um, that this this stuff has changed my life and so I'll take a break from talking and I'll let well, you Well, yeah just because just because so, I have some questions first of all with your out-of-body experience can you share did you get some of those questions answered are there other beings what did you see um, uh, yeah it's really Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on which which experience because they were so different from one another. So in the beginning, I've had experiences where I guess you could call it veridical, where I was able to verify some information because in the beginning, I would literally be in my home. So I would just float up out of my bed and I would see my wife, you know, on the bed when I'm up in the ceiling, I could look down at my wife's there, I could look at my room, oh, everything's the same, etc. Even when I look in the mirror, like, it's weird, I look the same. Um, but then I've also had other OBEs where I'm in places only God knows where, like it just some of it even seem kind of even out of this world where I'm in another place or dimension or in the universe, you know, just being within the galaxy, which sounds so strange. But I've had those I've had other instances where I'm talking telepathically to other beings and um, able to go through walls and go through physical objects, etc. And yeah, so I guess the things that it's really taught me, I've always believed in the non-physical realm, mm -hmm. you know, because of my Christian charismatic upbringing. So that that wasn't a stretch for me. But I guess what it did was it solidified my confidence in the afterlife that I have nothing to fear because even as a Christian, right? Like I didn't have fear of death because I was like, quote unquote, saved. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to heaven, you know, but that was mostly like a theological thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was something in that I believed in my heart, but now on an experiential level, I'm able to see some of these realities and places and 
quote unquote, what if you want to call it a dimension or another plane of reality, like, oh my gosh, there's, there's these other beings here. You know, there's these other places that I've never heard before. It's not just, you know, like a three tiered reality of like heaven, earth and hell, you know, or purgatory <laughs> or whatever. But there's like, I've been to all these different places that I'll be honest, many places I don't even understand, to be honest, and I don't have the, the language for it mm-hmm. sometimes. And but yeah, it's it's taught me a lot about myself. It's it's taught me a lot about just the connectedness with with other beings, you know, just being able to communicate and feel the love. And I'd come back to my body just feeling overwhelmed with love and I would just cry. I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> well, and I, I don't think that there is language because I've interviewed a bunch of people who've had near death experiences and they don't have the language to yeah. explain. Exactly. And so there's only so much that I can share, like on how to, you know, like the colors that I've seen, I'm not even sure if I've seen it here, I guess, you know, and um, just the details of your the things that you're able to see in detail and your ability to just know things. And, you know, so that's, that's the beauty of it all, I think, where, like, as a Christian, I was actually very adamant, very um dogmatic about heaven and hell like it wasn't a good thing to be honest i Mm -hmm. I still remember when i used to do these events and tell people you know if you don't believe in jesus you're gonna go to hell forever (laughs) you know for all eternity and and i look back i'm like oh my gosh what was i i mean honestly i did preach from my heart because that's but that's all that i knew that's what you knew at the time that's what i knew and so that's why i would grace myself in that area but when i look back when i think of it now if i were to sit in a service and i would to see a young guy preaching about heaven and hell and saying that you know your loved one who's not saved no matter how good they are they were or in hell for not just a hundred years or a thousand years or a million but they're there for all eternity that's pretty you know, heavy I, <laughs> heavy yeah. stuff you know yeah. where I'm, I, I would now i would look i would question them and be like you know so so they know this stuff how you know because they studied the greek and the hebrew you know because they went to seminary right but yet these people didn't have any ex- firsthand experiential knowledge you know now if this preacher had you know some near near death experience granted we can talk about that but that's where i started to move beyond just the, the theoretical part and the theology and i wanted to find out the answers for myself and so that's been very transformative for me question the out-of-body experiences how vivid and clear are they and how much do you remember them after Oh, I remember a lot of them very clearly after. Some of them, of course, I've had to write them down, just like with any memories that you have, mm-hmm. even very mm-hmm. powerful memories. But yeah, they're, they're, some of them are extremely vivid. Some of them were very uh, not so clear in the beginning. And that's where I've had to learn different techniques. In fact, I was messaging someone who um, I was giving someone tips earlier online about what to do when your vision is not clear, because sometimes we're like adapting, we're shifting to the frequency, you know, and it's not as clear. And so... Um, in those moments, that's where I had to do certain techniques and stuff like I've learned from William Buman, where you have to say like clarity now, awareness now, and then all of a sudden, boom, just everything's like super clear. <laughs> so I mean, I, that, that's a part is like, how clear do you mean? So that's a part where we kind of try to describe it as like these astral experiences being more real because everything's kind of heightened, not just your your sight, but also your hearing, your feeling, you know, you're just everything's at a heightened level. You know, and that's where it's like kind of it's very beautiful. So the places that I have experienced, thankfully, have all been positive. So despite a lot of the pushback that I get from especially religious people saying this stuff is demonic Mm -hmm. and they've had demons hover over them because of their, you know, when they had sleep paralysis. I could say 100 percent ever since I've been practicing out of body travel, there hasn't been any negative experience at all. They've all been 100 percent positive. And loving, or they've just been neutral, meaning I just, it's, I'm just like at some place and I don't really feel anything, you mm-hmm. know. To be honest, like I don't feel good or bad. I'm just like, oh, where am I? I'm in, I'm in the middle of a street, <laughs> you know. So I've had moments like that where there's no like good or bad feeling. So, Josh, I know in my past, and it's only happened probably a handful of times, but there's a moment between sleep and awake, and I'm, I, I know I'm lying in my bed, but I, and I would, one would guess it's an out of body experience because I'm sailing over a mountain. I can feel the wind mm. on my face. I can see things with such clarity. And then, and then what yeah. happens is I kind of freak myself out and just shake myself <laughs> out of it. But it's like I've tapped into something that is yeah. so real. 
So yeah. both with the healing and with out of body stuff, is uh-huh. there a way through you we can find out more? Because I think both things are, especially the healing, are not only interesting me, but interesting you know, some of the listeners right now. Like it's great he's sure. had this experience, but I want, I want, <laughs> I'd like to have a little healing, oh, yeah. or I'd like to have a little out of body experience. Um, yeah. is, do you teach that, or have a connection somehow that yeah. we can? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I teach this stuff all the time. So, of course, I have my YouTube videos that are for free. Um, so, you could just look up my name on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I have a website. I've written two books. And one of the books does focus, have a, have a, it has a whole, a whole chapter on healing. Um, I've done a series on YouTube on out of body and astral projection. So, I even put out a video last night, my latest video on things to do when you're out of body because. Um, people who get out of body, you know, they try to get out of body, but then just like you, you had the fear, boom, you come back. And mm-hmm. so I tell people, no, you got to have a plan. So you'll stay out longer. So I have different techniques that people can do. So yeah. And I also have an entire course that I created several months ago that's on the law of attraction. And the law of attraction covers a broad, you know, a bunch of topics. And so healing was one of my biggest areas that I covered in my law of attraction online video course. And so, yeah, there's, I I totally get it. You know, I mean, just telling my story earlier, it was hearing another person's story that inspired me to, to search and to find answers, you know, so I'd be glad, you know, to help people, people reach out to me. Um, You know, I, even with my, just, it just came to mind right now with my course, uh, I, I'm actually giving out a discount. And so my course is around $500. But if you were to sign up, if you were to do it soon, just type in save 200 and you get $200 off the the course. And so there you go. Yeah, you can learn healing on your own. Oh, a little bit more about your course. You can find it on your website, right? Um, mm-hmm. But is it, it's already like recorded and filmed and people can oh, join yeah, in? Oh, yeah, everything's Join in at any time so they don't have to be live. That's something important to me because I travel yeah, a lot. It's on your own time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's on your own time. That's the beauty of it all. And it also has like uh, worksheets. And so there's a sense of accountability there, So which is very helpful for people. If you're really serious about this stuff, you don't just watch it and then you forget about it. But there's these worksheets and these quizzes that will keep you accountable so you can start to digest it. And then I also suggest certain actions that you can take after each lesson so you could you know apply it to your daily life action is so important i can't tell you how many seminars and programs that i've purchased and i've never done anything with them it's like i was inspired (laughs) but i didn't apply them and i think action is so important um somebody wrote a book that was called god will work with you but not for you so it was like you know (laughs) <laughs> you got to take some action. Sure. Yes. I mean, that's, that's something that I could honestly say really put into, really manifested my, my healing back in the day, Sandra, because, you know, when you think about it, right, how did I know that I was healed of my back mm-hmm. and my girds? And the only way that I knew that was when I was doing the things I wasn't supposed to do. You know, so that's not something I'm going to tell your audience specifically. Go do the thing you're not supposed to do. It's really according to the person's belief level. So for myself, when I had GERDs, that was extremely bad. Like I said, it was really bad. I did take a step of faith and I felt good about it. And that day, I remember I chose to eat pizza and hamburgers that same day. Mm -hmm. And that's something you just don't do. I mean, I told you just a little ketchup would screw me up. But that day is when I was healed. So it's like telling a crippled person, hey, get up and walk. But a crippled person will be like, what? I'm crippled though. Why would I get up and walk? Get up and walk. And that's where the faith starts to kind of manifest and take action. Because you're not just saying it, but you're actually feeling it. And you're also living it out. You know what I'm saying? I do. Now, how about your hand? Have you come yeah. to believe? Not yet. <laughs> no, I don't mean so that. But just, so I, I, well, I've had some things in my life that have happened. And it's not yeah. till years ahead that I realized yeah. like they had to be for where I am now. So, you know, so very well could be with your hand. Even when my dad was dying, I tried every kind of miracle healing, everything I could research and do. And Mm. he still died. But now here we are, uh, nine years, actually nine years and a couple days in the future. Mm. And I would not be talking to you, wouldn't have this show, wouldn't have written the book, wouldn't have done live conferences wouldn't have helped so many people through grief had it happened just the way it did, had it not happened just yeah. the way it did. So 
somehow. I totally. Yeah, I feel you with that because I, I just know. Yeah, it is. It's like it's a gift. I mean, it was something like I said, I it was so painful for me as a child just mm-hmm. being like I felt different. But sure. it's all it's all like you connect the dots afterwards, you know, and like with the pain that I've been through, I've been able to really uh, encourage a lot of people, especially because um, I also make videos about like self love too. And I've had people reach out to me where they have kids who have deformities and they enjoyed my videos and learned to love themselves. And so that's the beauty of it all is that I'm not perfect, so to speak, at least in right. the physical sense that we're all a work in progress. And even if my hand is like this, it still trips people out saying, hey, that's interesting that Josh is teaching you a healing, but look at his hand. And so people could look at it in a negative way and be like, I don't believe him. Look at his hand. Or they could look at it and say, huh, look at his hand. And he's so confident in healing. Something must have happened. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's like that's where my back and my my GERD story comes into play where I wouldn't have believed the way I'm believing now with this much confidence, Sandra, unless I had my back and my GERDs healed, just to be honest. Because if I went back in this healing journey, like when I was 17 and, you know, if I didn't see any results, but I'm just reading all these books and stories and I'm not experiencing it myself, I, I, it would be pretty hard for me to start teaching this stuff based on theory, you know. So I know that um, my own healing has been a tremendous uh, thing for me to, to be confident with what I'm teaching now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I'm sharing this right this second, but have you followed any of my posts about Sonia Rinaldi, the researcher in brazil i've seen a little bit here and there yeah yeah for the last over 30 years she's been just quietly and freely working with parents and recording voices of their deceased children right right so that that i always heard about her and i thought god that's just amazing and the last few years she's actually been working and filming things like a television turned off or a computer screen or (laughs) static now she's got an experiment (laughs) that for things of static are coming into it's it's like a plastic easter egg that's clear and yeah. what's happening now is faces are showing up and turning and and things and they're people's loved <laughs> ones and talk about healing a grieving heart yeah. yesterday she sent me a picture and it's my dad oh oh I wow know. that's wild <laughs> it, it's beyond wild it is beyond oh. wild and That's it's assuring. and it's like nice. and it's not a picture. I mean, it's a young picture of him, but it's not oh. a picture that was taken. You know, so it's like mm, sure. it, it. It's great, and it's always been great for me to hear stories of parents who see their children, or uh, an older lady. Her husband came through as a young man, and you can see it's, it's mm. the same guy, but it's a whole different experience. Yeah, when it happens to you. Yeah, you know, for like, sure. Yeah, it just changes your life. I mean, it doesn't matter what people say, you know what you've experienced. And right. And same, tell th- the same thing goes with healing. Same thing goes with so many of the experiences I've had. So I absolutely love connecting people to people such as yourself who are talking about Thank healing you. out of body experiences, because it's like, I, I, you know, not everybody's got the same passions, but there'll be people that sure. are listening to this right now. Like, I am going to go check out those YouTube videos. <laughs> I got to know. I got to know. You know, and, <laughs> and that's how I am, too. It's like we yeah, we don't die. Way. We don't. We don't. Yeah. But then how do we have the most fulfilling life and really pushing the envelope and see what's possible? And so that that last breath, when we look back on our life, it's like we really mm-hmm. went for it, you know? So like going for healing and out-of-body experiences <laughs> and all that, like, cool, law of attraction stuff. You know, why not play with it? Because yeah. we are in a, in a miracle universe. So I'll, I want to ask you about your books and your podcast. Sure. sure. So you mentioned in one of your books, you talk about healing. Which one is that? And then if you could give, you know, let us know about your books and um, what's yeah, in them, sure. why you wrote them. Sure. So my first book is called So You Thought You Knew Letting Go of Religion. So obviously it's about religion. It's my journey out of uh, fundamental fear-based Christianity. And so I share my whole journey on that and I talk, and I cover pretty much the, the big topics within the Christian faith, like hell, God, the Bible, the devil, and I share my own take on it. And then on the second book, it's more of a fun like a fun, lighthearted book about self-love, but it's also a book on metaphysics at the same time, um, where I talk about healing, I talk about prosperity, I talk about following your dreams and loving yourself. So it's that that's the book where I talk a lot about my hand and I share stories in there that have absolutely just changed my life where I overcame my biggest fear. And of course, I don't want to spoil it, so I guess you have to check out the book. But yeah, that's I, that, I pretty much 
share a lot in the the second book when it comes to the metaphysical stuff. And so in the future, I'll be writing books on healing and OBE stuff. But right now, I'm just enjoying the journey of collecting the data. And one of these days, it's gonna those those two books are gonna come out. But yeah. I'm very proud of you, and I really love oh, the thanks. name, The Secret <laughs> to Awesomeness. It's, like, <laughs> it's yeah. just fun and lighthearted. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's great. And then the flip side podcast, talk about that. Yeah, so the flip side, um, I, I came up with that name because just like on how I started to shift in religion and all these other topics, I've transitioned so much in my life that it kind of gets people upset, to be honest, because I keep shifting, but... I always try, try to give the flip side. So when I was, you know, when it comes to religion, I try to show the flip side. Here's another way to look at God. Here's another way to look at faith. And then I talked about um, the flip side of this other topic when it comes to OBEs, this other flip side to healing, you know, in contrast to the people who are against medicine or just Western medicine or whatever. And just trying to give like the other side. Right. So creating some sort of conversation and not trying to create you know, like these people who are don't believe what I believe are the bad people. They're just trying to create a conversation. And so, yeah, that's called the Flipside Podcast. And some of my guests um, you've also had on your show, I believe. And so we do talk a lot about afterlife, OBEs, healing, et cetera, spirit guides. And so um, and that's how I eventually found some of my guests, too, I think, is when I saw some of your guests. I was like, I got to have them on my show, too. Isn't that fun? So it's, I'll, been, it's been fun. Yeah, just connecting. I'll stalk and... your show a little and see. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really grateful for you and just the work that you do, just discovering you. I don't know. It was probably a few years back, and I remember just hearing your story and about your dad and even just you having to support yourself doing like a – you do like a cooking thing, right? Like I do. Call? catering yeah, yeah. for so, race car yeah, teams. Catering. Yeah, yep, so, still know, do. So just like you, you know, I had to do the same thing. When I left the ministry, I didn't have any income anymore. I was literally just living off of donations, which was really hard. I'm like, I got to come up with some mm -hmm. sort of, you know, job <laughs> to help sustain my wife and I. And so I started having, creating works for uh, doing a particular job that wasn't necessarily my thing that I was trained in, but that's, that's what helps us. And, you know, we've just been following our dreams and my wife and I, we've been holding on to our truth of how we understand things with no regrets. And so has it been a challenging journey? Absolutely, at times. But it's been very worthwhile and very fulfilling, you know, which is why we don't mind the, the criticism because, you know, we're not getting any younger and we just want to be able to share what has changed both of, both of our lives, you know. So, yeah, thank you too, Sandra, for it's, it's an honor being on your show. Oh, my pleasure. And it, we're both real people <laughs> and I think that's why – I don't want to say we're likable, but we are. We're normal. <laughs> you meet you and I in person and, and, you know, there's no big egos. It's just people that have had tough times, extraordinary life. Yeah. And that's why I think we are the perfect messenger. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I sense love through your podcast because you, you do seem very relational when I hear you talk about your events and you can't wait to meet so-and-so in person and give them a hug. I was like, oh, Sandra seems so nice. Uh, so I, I, <laughs> over, like I did a conference. I've done a couple so far and there'll be more to come. Um, but uh, I, I overheard somebody say, oh, my God, she's just as real as she sounds like on the show. I'm like, yes, <laughs> feels like it only be me. And, and that's inspiring. But for you and our listener, I mean, there's a whole world and universe to be explored. I mean, you bring in out of body experiences. It's like a whole nother level. But it's exciting. Wow. This is the good stuff in life. I mean, life can be so, so difficult. Um, but yeah. there can also be so many rewards. And I, my dad would always say, without risk, there's no reward. And it's yeah. like pushing the envelope. It's going outside of our comfort zone mm. and, exactly. and taking action on new things. And if you can have a, a leader or somebody you're learning from, whether it's listening to your show or watching a YouTube video or, you know, joining in on your law of attraction course, I mean, that's, that's good. And I want to ask yeah. you too, you're going sure. to be one of the speakers at the Soul Summit, Scottsdale, sure. coming up. And yeah. I was meant to be, but I can't be there. So I'm a little bit heartbroken. Oh. But it's our same friends that put on the uh, Afterlife Symposium for the past years. And um, Kathleen Malone and Suzanne Wilson right. and bunches. So, but it's yeah. it's not just afterlife. It's I, what I think. It's living life. And I think that's yeah. maybe why... Um, you've been asked because like I, yeah. I say, you know, it's great to get all this information about the afterlife, but then what? 
So what are you going to yeah. be talking about there? And what's your, what's your <laughs> hope for there? I mean, I'm certainly similar to what we have on the show, but sure. um, yeah. What's your passion? Yeah. Cool. I, I'd that? love to, uh, to promote the event. So yeah, it's, it's Soul Summit Scottsdale in Arizona and it's going to be on September 12 through 15 and Kathleen Malone, I'm sure you know who she is. Mm-hmm. She's just awesome. And she's been connecting with me and her and Suzanne, they invited me to be part of it. So I'll be speaking on, um, belief, the power of belief and believing the impossible. And so a lot of what I'm going to be, what I shared here in the interview, but I, I really want to help raise their vibration because I know there's a lot of people there with certain desires, whether it's healing, reaching people on the quote unquote other side, learning out of body travel, you know, and there are times where we get discouraged. So I want to be able to help people up their game, so to speak, when it comes to belief, not to give up, you know, because just my own healing process has been a challenge, you know, that whole thing. I could have given up when I was in so mm-hmm. much pain, but I want to be able to kind of help raise that vibration, and which is what the event is actually all about. It's about learning the art of high vibration, you know, and so we have some amazing people that are going to be there, spiritual teachers, psychic and evidential mediums, healers. I mean, we have George Norrie, Suzanne Wilson, Suzanne Giesman, Craig Hogan, and a bunch of other people. Um, I'm also going to not just be speaking there, I'll be on the panel with George Norrie and several others, and I'll also be doing um, healing session, healing sessions. So if you'd like to uh, meet me there, and maybe you could allow me to do some of that stuff on you <laughs> in case you might need some help. So there you go. I love it. And you can find out more at soulsummitscottsdale.org. Yeah. So we've got a few minutes left. Do you want to uh, reach into that intuitive mind of yours and just Leave us with sure. a little wisdom or inspiration or a little tool we can use or just whatever yeah. comes to mind. Sure, sure. So what comes to mind right now is, as we were talking, it was I just want to encourage your listeners to follow their truth. And so I know getting into this area of the afterlife and spirit and all these things, you know, we, we can face a lot of challenges and people looking at us as like we're crazy or we're, we're losing our minds or, you know, but but really follow your heart, you know, because you as a listener know what's on your heart, what you want to see, what you want to experience. And I would encourage you to pursue that with everything that you have with, with, you know, being fulfilled in this life, you know, because if we, if we have this life to live and you want to be able to do what you really love to do, just like me, I'm doing healing now. This is my dream doing healing and, um, teaching people. And I know that I I could have gone the other route, where I continue to stay in my ministry at the time, just trying to please other people. But I knew that I had to be true to myself. So if I were just encourage your listeners, be true to yourself, you'll be very fulfilled. You know, so you might you might lose some friends, but the beauty the beauty of it all is that you're going to meet new friends. And just like how Sandra and I are connecting here, you, you will attract your quote unquote tribe because there are people just like you who have similar experiences and similar feelings of feeling alone and you're not. So, you know, it's just a matter of time and there's a good time for things to happen. And, you know, spirit is always going to guide you. So always follow your heart and listen to your intuition. Oh, those are great words of advice. And you're right about the tribe. <laughs> uh, you know, I've yeah. gone through some changes and friendship and family, <laughs> sure. but the tribe yeah. is all of a sudden arising and i'm like i love these people awesome and it's really it's really nice and there's a bunch of us that are one-on-one you know just one person thinking you know who are we and where am i going to find my tribe and and we're out there we might just be connected through a radio show now but there will be Mm -hmm. so much more josh can people consult you one-on-one yeah i also do coach so you could see all that stuff on my website okay joshua tongle.com there you go. <laughs> and beneath this episode, I've got links to your website, podcast, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, Instagram, <laughs> books, and more. Yeah. So, Josh, thank you so much for awesome. being our thank guest you. today. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Sandra. Really great. And for our listener, thank you so much for spending the time with Josh and I. As a reminder, <laughs> all episodes are available at we don't die radio.com. iTunes only holds the last 100. They're all also on YouTube, but 
They're all on WeDon'tDieRadio.com. And if you join my Insiders Club, it's called, you can receive a very healing audio called How to Survive Grief, My 19 Mm. Reasons to Believe in the Afterlife PDF. And it says several chapters of my book, We Don't Die, but it's actually the whole book. (laughs) I know. Yes. Yeah. Very generous. Very generous. Well, (laughs) I am. You know, here's a little secret. You may use it or not, and it's not going to be a secret anymore. But Paulo (laughs) Paulo Coelho that wrote The Alchemist Mm -hmm. is the best-selling author alive currently. And all of his books are available to read for free. Wow. So not many people know that, but if you search for them, you can find them. And it, it really hit me that give people the information. And certainly if you'd rather have a hard copy or audio book, sure. people will go and do that, but it's giving freely. Um, yeah. And I know we all have to make money, but sure. uh, it, it wasn't a bad thing. So I just used Paulo Coelho as my nice. mentor in that. So, and <laughs> I want people to have the, I can't tell you how many people have uh, been very close to giving up on life and even had their, exit strategy planned and whether it's Mm -hmm. one of these episodes or reading those few chapters that ended up being the whole book saved people's Mm -hmm. lives beautiful i'm a giver i'm a giver so anyways to you and uh, and to the listeners uh thank Mm -hmm. you for being here my name is sandra champlain always delighted to be your host on we don't die radio i do wholeheartedly believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important so in josh's words follow your truth follow your heart take some time to really acknowledge who you are love yourself no. We can do that. Look in the mirror and love yourself. You're one of a kind, my friend. So thank you for listening and we'll see you soon.